Hey man, it's Stephen Nash uh, coming at you here from the secret headquarters. I got my uh, nice little uh, protective covering behind me. Uh, got my dog running around back there somewhere, girlfriend back there somewhere, kitchen, cats. Um, my whole life, right behind the scrim. Um, so, you know, I'm due here to talk to you today about tenets four, five, and six of the code of the natural. Um, I'm going low tech here because I'm a little pressed for time. I got a client I'm supposed to meet in a little while, and I got another guy tomorrow. If you guys are watching, you should be working through natural attraction. Um, so, anyway, without any further ado, let's get into these three. Um, number four, five, and six. So, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, then you missed last week's video. You should check that out. You can find it on the blog, uh, howtogetagirlfriend.com backslash blog, or uh, YouTube Cutting Edge Image. That's the account. Um, so, tenants 4, 5, and 6 today. Next week will be 7, 8, and 9. The week after that, 10, 11, and 12. This is all building up to a release of a new program I have called The Natural Art of the Pickup, which will be an ebook and <clears throat> eight hours of audio where I lead you step by step through uh, learning the skills and putting those skills together so that when you meet women you do it naturally. There's no gimmicks or, or scripts or anything that you're dependent upon and it's probably uh, the, the smoothest way to meet women and certainly the most effective and consistent. Um, so these two will be released as a, as a package in a couple of weeks and uh, it's pretty exciting. It's unlike any other product out there. Really stressing a natural approach to meeting and attracting women. Um, so anyway, I'm talking about the kind of lifestyle pieces here. The, this code of the natural is really how I propose that you should live. Some rules or suggestions for you to live by. So number four, I am the go-to guy of my social circle, always knowing what's going on in the community and leading my social circle into new and fascinating experiences. Uh, one of the great uh, things that I like to teach is about having an attractive lifestyle this is probably the most important part of that, which is kind of being somebody who knows what's up, who knows what's going on in your world, and who is always out there uh, experimenting, trying things out, new restaurants, new venues, new events. Uh, whatever's happening in your world, be somebody who goes and experiences it firsthand, and then lead your crew into that, crafting a kind of interesting evening or outing or day out of it. A number of years ago, for example, I led a group of friends out to Coney Island because that's about to shut down. We had this big time. We rode a bunch of rides. We went to a ball game, laid out on the beach. It was just a great time. None of these friends who were all new to the city had ever been there before, so it made sense for me to kind of do something that was classically New York-ish. And um, that kind of thing is available to you. I don't care where you live. Um, if you live out in the country, go explore some kind of natural wonder or natural sight that's near you. Uh, the only thing limiting you about uh, in terms of possibilities with this is your own thinking. So if you hear me say this and think, well, there's nothing in my community to do that's interesting, I'm here to tell you that you're wrong and that what has to be put on the table here in that case is your own thought process and how you see the world. Again, having an attractive lifestyle is kind of like having an attractive mindset. You see possibilities, you see adventure, you see interesting things going on, and you engage with those. You don't hold back, you're not passive necessarily in face of those things, you go into them and experience them. All the while, what you're doing, <clears throat> these huge side effects to gaining this kind of real world experience is, is that you can suddenly be the go-to guy in your social circle because you know what's going on. So being, you know, if you're a New Yorker, you, you pick up the Village Voice, you read Time Out in New York, you read the Times, the art section, the metro section, so you're clear about what's happening in the world here. And the same goes for wherever you live. So do a little extra work there, and you'll see it has it pays big dividends uh, in terms of your lifestyle and social circle. Um, number five, the mantra of my social circle. Invite someone that no one else knows. Uh, I realize that may be confusing when you read that, but here's what I mean when I say that. The, the best easiest, most effective, efficient way to meet new women and to grow your social circle is when you do something, when you arrange a cool outing, right? Let's just go back to my Coney Island example. There are plenty of better examples, but it's fresh in my mind. Um, you, tell, you tell the 10 people that are coming to say, okay, here's a little game. Let's play a little game. It'll be fun. Invite someone along that no one else knows. 
And so what you'll have is three friends who say, ah, geez, I can't put it together, I had to work late, couldn't find anybody. But the rest of them will actually show up with somebody. You'll probably get half new faces. So if there are ten people who agree to go, who want to go, who are your friends and who are outgoing like you and want to kind of experience this and have some fun, I predict you get five new faces. It's five new people. And usually, if you have women in your social circle, which you should, then there will be two to three new women on the trip, okay? You're going to do something fun, it's interesting, and you're the man. You're the high-value guy. You're the one who set it up. You're the go-to guy, right? Being the go-to guy affords itself certain privileges to you. Uh, number one is, is that you are kind of responsible for the outing, and so people look to you to be the leader. And that is a super attractive characteristic for women. And so what you're doing here is you're creating a situation where you can naturally be the leader and hopefully do that on a regular basis. So you can see here how that would magnetize and bring women into your circle that have things in common with you because they're not going to go unless they want to go and you want to go. So there's already an interest in this particular event which kind of says that you probably have more than just that in common. And plus they're coming to you. You don't have to go out sergeant. You don't have to go out to the bar or lounge or anywhere. You don't have to go pick up girls. They're actually coming to you. So in that instance, you're pre-approved. You're high value. If you use the social skills I'm going to be basically handing you at the end of the month, you're gold. It's really the easiest, most effective way to meet lots of women. Is have a cool, interesting life and convince the people in your social circle to bring other people along. It's so simple, it'll surprise you. Within a month, you could be having two dates a week. Tenant number six, I am always leading and screening as I have standards for whom I will date and who gets into my social circle. So this is real simple. In the Natural Art of the Pickup, which again, it's coming out in a couple of weeks, I teach you a very specific, clear way to screen people. Now, it's not tacky, it's not overt, it's not rude, and it's not embarrassing. It's subtle, it's smooth, it's natural, and it bespeaks a man who has self-esteem and confidence. This is the way you should be managing your conversations, by screening from the outset. Not so much so that you can weed out weirdos, that'll be obvious, but so that you can really find, the, the mindset I want you to have is that you're really looking for people who have things in common with you, who will want to be part of your group, that you're interested in, that have things that you can learn from, that have similarities to you, so that if you do things together, it'll be more fun rather than kind of a, you don't want to bring a crutch along, for example, someone who doesn't really want to be there, who's kind of irritated and kind of a nag. You don't want that. You want people who are like-minded, energetic, interested. They will be the ones you'll want to add to your social circle, and that's why you should always be leading and screening in your conversations, not only with women, but with men, okay? So if you meet somebody tonight, you're out at a friend's house, and you know they says, oh, here's my friend Jim, you know, in a very smooth, elegant way, you should find out what Jim's got going for him, and if he's the kind of guy you might want to invite into your group. Being in your group, being in your crew, is something special and valuable. You need to treat it that way by not giving any person who comes along a membership card. Okay, guys, that's it. I'm almost out of time. YouTube only gives me 10 minutes. I'll see you next week. Have an awesome weekend. I'll talk to you soon.